David Lowe joins us from Liverpool for some more analysis on the Paris attacks. He's a former counter-terrorism officer. Um, David, this is not the first multi-attacker coordinated strike, but what strikes you as different about this one? What's different about this one? I mean, it's been in one location. If we go back to June, we, we, we saw three coordinated attacks uh, in Tunisia, uh, the mosque in Kuwait, and the attack in France. Uh, this time it was in one, one city, and, you, and, we, and we've seen the absolute uh, chaos that this has caused and the problems there were for the police on Friday evening in France. I think this is one big difference. And how challenging is it, therefore, for the police and security services to tackle these kind of attacks? Well, I, this is a, an attack that's been feared and has been feared for some time. We, we, we could go back to the attack on Mumbai. And a lot of Western states, and I'm, obviously I'm more familiar with the UK in particular, uh, have been anticipating this type of attack and trying to prepare for it, even from the 2012 Olympics when they were held in London. Uh, and there have been uh, practical events carried out to, to train officers and, and train the relevant personnel to deal with this. But it shows the enormity uh, of trying to prevent these type of attacks from happening and the, the reliance there is on intelligence. And it's not just intelligence gathered in one state, it's having to share this intelligence because, as we've seen, uh, even from, from the latest developments, where clearly it appears that some individuals from Belgium have been assisting those in France, groups like uh, Islamic State uh, are truly a, an international threat. So we need that transnational uh, response to try and deal with them, and not just within Europe, but even with states outside Europe. Uh, to cooperate because any little bit of intelligence uh, that can identify someone or associate with someone or even show there is an even greater risk because there's that many people on these systems they have to identify the greater risk with the finite resources available to intelligence and policing agencies so it, it, it's, it's constantly assessing and I think here's the greater pressure now that will come on from uh, what we saw in Paris on Friday and David, you talked about some of the practical things that security services and police forces are doing. Just give us some more on that. What kind of um, tactics are being employed and rehearsed by police to try and tackle these kind of attacks? Well, the, the initial pass is the first response, and uh, they would be predominantly uh, uniform officers who, who are armed. And of course, in the UK, uh, most uniform, office, uh, uniform patrols are not armed here in the UK, so that would add to us here in the UK. But you, you can see uh, in, in, on continental Europe, for example, where officers are routinely armed, uh, it's that initial response. Because what's crucial here is going to that initial response and trying to contain uh, any attack that's happening there to minimise the number of casualties. And then on top of that, don't forget, you, you then have to look at the paramedic services, uh, you have to look at transport services, you have to look at all these agencies who would be involved. Uh, and of course the other then uh, issue is trying to make it a sterile area so it's to get as many people out of the area as quickly as possible to minimise it. Then in the background, uh, like um, what my role would be as a, as a detective, is now trying to gather the, the evidence that's coming in and the information, make sense of it and to try and get some focus on where the investigation should be leading. Uh, and of course what we saw in France on Friday, crucial was trying to identify the attackers as soon as possible because from that then go back to what intelligence is, is present to see if there's any associates who can be uh, recognised because we saw in these attacks, it was planned and it's not just those attackers, it's other people who are assisting them, transporting them, making travel arrangements, getting the uh, ammunition, getting the firearms. Uh, the, the, there's a whole myriad of, of activities that take place. So as soon as these people can be arrested, and of course you, you, you see the issue with a group like Islamic State, they have operatives not just in one state, in a number of states that can uh, easily transfer uh, and travel. David Lowe there from Liverpool, counter-terrorism expert. Thank you very much for that.